Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are going to be having a look at what happens if you take all the jungle principles we talk about all the time, the good power thing, the good habits, the right decision making, understanding your matchup, your win conditions and so on and put them into one singular game. How would that look for the enemy team and how would that look for yourself? In short, a total jungle carry guide for jungle perfection so that you can absolutely dominate every single game you play. Now that's a lot of buzzwords, but sometimes you really do mean it. Every time this jungler does something that you need to know that maybe from a lesson or something you've learned somewhere else, I will mention it and link the direct videos below so you can use this carry guide as a conduit to basically see what happens if we take these videos, we apply them to our game one piece at a time and become a jungle savant. So as always, if you do enjoy and learn something, please do like, share and comment. It really does help push the videos and I appreciate it very dearly. Don't forget to subscribe to the other channel for all your champion goodness. And now with your beards primed and ready, let's begin. Now, as you can see, Diana vs. Viego, high elo career as a good example. The runes will show up on your screen in a second. And I chose these two champions purely because one, the Diana absolutely pops off. And two, both of these junglers are obscenely popular, really high pick rates. So it also shows you how to play them, how to play against them, as well as how to use their style for a variety of junglers. And obviously, you can apply all these core principles to whatever jungler you're playing. And while the Diana gets leashed on the bottom side, Viego gets leashed on the top side. It's worth noting that no doubt there will be in the comments, what happens if my lanes feed? What happens if I'm behind? What happens if I simply cannot use these principles to really turbo steamroll the enemy jungler into uninstalling? Well, here's the thing. I've made videos on all of those. I will link them below as well, just to keep your bases covered. But those situations, if you are to be a perfect and total carry jungler from a game to game basis, should really be infrequent. If you are truly that behind that often and you really rely on your laners to rotate that often, there's something very wrong there. And remember, the goal should always be to get ahead and then to close out. The goal should never be, well, I guess I need to be behind because of my pick. You can still get ahead with good pathing. And to that point, the Diana is simply going for a good full clear. Yes, she warded the entrance of a red buff in case of cheeky invades, but the Viego had no leash. We don't know where he started. The Volibear has prey on the Camille and uses that time to go ward. And I'm seeing this very often in many, many elos. But as you can see, the Viego goes for the blue side into a gank on the mid lane. The only thing about this is you must consider the fact that Diana started bottom side, will be sequencing upside, and if something goes wrong or if she is able to rotate quickly, maybe she's doing a five camp, you could easily be counter ganked if you don't pay attention to that. But naturally, Lucian mid, he wants prior, he wants to trade, he wants to get that tempo advantage. So it's a nice free kill for the Viego. Diana activates and hunts jungle tracking, saying, right, I pathed a little safely because we don't know where he started. I see him go down to the bottom side now. That means she has more than enough time to do her Krugs and head to the top side crab. Viego, on the other hand, does the bottom side crab before doing his red into Krugs because he wants to make sure the Diana doesn't try and double scuttle. And if bot lane was particularly juicy, he could gank that. Unfortunately, his bottom lane died 2v2. That is the nature of bottom lanes, ladies and gentlemen. From here, he goes back to his red buff and Diana goes back to base, nothing else to do. She will head to the bottom side of the map where she will see wolves and drums showing up. But what's this? You've noticed a change in pathing. She's heading to the mid lane. The Victor is fighting with the Lucian. Not only do we need to use our F keys at minimap to see the low HP on the Victor, you see them trading, click, have a look, what's going on. Use your reactive pathing to anticipate a play, maybe some cleanup kills. And then of course, look at the state of the minion wave. It's pushed back. That means she can very easily slide against the wall into the side lane bush, scan for any potential vision. If the Victor overstays thinking that Diana's gone to the grump and the wolves, you flash, you clean up, you grab a kill. This right here is already a big difference between high elo junglers and your typical forester. She goes back into a jungle, hits the plant and will do the grump. The Viego has pinged out that the Dino went to the bottom side and will be doing her tier two grump and tier two wolves. And it doesn't take a 200 year brain to understand that the Viego, because he sequenced top to bottom, is going to head to his top side for the exact same reason. And here's the difference between good junglers and the best junglers. Viego says, right, she's bottom side. I can go use this to dive top lane, to gank top lane, to counter jungle perhaps. Diana is a good jungler and says, you know what? I'm not going to go to the wolves. I know Viego's top lane. Let's go dive the Kaiser and the Karma. You know they used all sums in the 2v2 death earlier. You also know that everyone's expecting you to farm wolves. And be honest with me, you would have farmed wolves as well, yes? You want to go topside as well. As you're watching the dive not go particularly as planned, she's still able to get two kills. Everyone in the bottom lane is death. But in the end, your attempt here is to try and snowball the winning lane. Get the Ezreal ahead. Give your Leona tempo so she can roam first to objectives, help you with ganks and whatnot. It's also very important that even if you are a farming jungler or someone who wants to get six, you will get six faster simply by, you know, 
ganking, by impacting the map, by being a difference all over the rift. And this rotation you're seeing on the mid lane is just super big brain. Yes, the Karma shows up, but the Diana knows that the Lucian is pushing the Victor. She knows that the Viego is topside and with her dive on the bottom side is most likely going to be counter jungling at least one or both of her cams. In turn, the Karma will leave base and because there's no real need for her to go to bottom lane, Diana can anticipate her roam to the mid lane to assist and to be present to make magic happen. Now obviously you're watching her go through, she gets level 6 and uses that ult mid fight and then of course the top lane difference comes in with a TB from the Camille. Volibear just used it on the top side, Camille uses it in this fight. Kills our jungle hero, but as with most people, they like to fight, they see the karma mid. Leona and Ezreal come out of base, they rotate, get some kills of their own, and Kaiser and Valibar are the only two not to join, making this an even 4v4 fight. Now once she respawns, you could obviously go to the bottom side, look to impact bottom lane again, get the dragon, and so on. And that is her goal, she wants the sequence now to do that, but you must balance your ganking, fighting, and farming. She left a lot of camps up when she did that bottom lane and mid lane fight, so now you can simply sequence down and attempt to accomplish those things. Now as they saw Diana head to the Krux, the Viego who was already heading to the bottom side probably for the same sort of idea, decides to test his luck and go to the mid lane after clearing some camps. Now he walks into a control ward, he clears it, he knows he has an RNG crab on the bottom side with lane prior, but the Diana has done a great job of remaining hidden. Is she going to go to the bottom side, sequence the blue camps and perhaps, you know, do the crab and the dragon? The Viego has no idea. And Diana understood this and used the fact that the RNG crab was bottom side to go and steal his blue, to steal his grump and now to dive the top laner. And that's why it's important to look at those lane states when you're doing these counter junglings, when you're moving around the map. Maybe I can just dive this, maybe I can just gank this on my way to do something else. They get rid of the Camille very easily. The Viego does what a lot of other junglers do in your sort of like D4 and below game, so it's kind of unbecoming of a Korean master jungler to do this, but he tries to hold the top lane tower and dies for his sins. He understood that maybe the Dyna was actually going to take his blue camps because he showed on the bottom side. However, he also could have used this time to go and steal her blue and grump, anticipating this, diving bottom lane and taking the dragon. And I'm sorry to say it, but this is what happens when you're the jungle difference. When you're a perfect jungler, you are making these plays. You are the driving force. You are not pressured whatsoever by the Viego. And if he makes the wrong decision because of what you did, he loses out. Even if he does take your blue grump and maybe a dragon, you are not letting him get anything for free. No advantages for free, just like we talked in last week's video. That's one of the best videos I've made in terms of denying and suppressing the enemy jungler just so that you get those two level leads, even in negative game states. And the Dyna has done so here. Out of base, she does her Wolves Blue Grump, that's expected. You know the Viego has nothing on the top side other than Herald, so he most likely will head to the bottom side of the map as well. We can look for a gank, we can ward, we want to get the dragon. If we run into the mid laner and the jungler, as we expect to do, kill them. You have the lead, you have the advantage, you have Chain CC available to you from the Leona. All of this is because of the Diana's pathing and the fact that she now has 8 kills, 8 stacks of a Dark Seal and a significant gold lead over everyone on the map. And it was quite unassuming, she just applied jungle fundamentals, made good decisions, watched the lane states and abused them. She gets an objective for this as well. And yes, when you're this fed as a jungler at 9 minutes, it already has to cross your mind. How do I close out this early game beautifully, get a huge mid game lead and then just basically end the game by 20 minutes? You have to be thinking like that as a jungler. Yes, you scale to a certain degree in the Ezreal and US Diana, but they have a Victor, Viego and a Kaiser. We do actually want to think about those win conditions and how to satisfy them. There have been bigger throws in history. And as I was saying that, she got another kill on the bottom lane there through a dive. If someone helps you with the dragon, if someone helps you by rotating, guide them back to lane, abuse the fact that you have numbers advantages, now you can get the RNG crab, and because you're staying in the same area so long, the victor's never gonna expect you still to be there. He should actually, this is bad pathing by him, but he's tilted by your presence, he's tilted by your behavior. Assassinate him, that's what you're there to do, using your lead to extend the influence of your jungle, which now includes the river soon to include the Viego's jungle as well. However, as we saw in the Gurren vs. Kadral Lee Sin video where Gurren loves to hold towers, there's a lot of experience, we deny platings to lanes that might actually be winning, like the Kaiser and the Karma. And if you understand that bottom lane is kind of in a volatile state at the moment and you have the power to influence it, do so. Hold the wave, wait for Leona, 2v2 them and go back to base. So many times in these scenarios I've seen junglers go back to their wolves. I've seen junglers, instead of ganking bottom lane after the dragon, go back to their grom, maybe to the crab. They don't look for the victor gank. All of these things she's looking for are because she's reading the map, she understands the game flow and she understands the tempo control she has. Because she did hold the bot of course and she got those kills of Viego most likely will secure that objective for himself. At least that's one thing he's done right. The problem is he is arrogant and many junglers like Viego players will think, hey, I just need one fight to pop off, I get the resets, 
winning. Well, then is gonna do her red and then her Raptors thinking all is gone. The Viego saw the Lucian and the Leona go across mid lane. He just had to leave, take the advantage and get out. No, he wants to try and trap with the Victor. He wants to try and trap with his top lane prior. He dies. Diana uses great reactive pathing, just like at the beginning of the video. Rotates, uses her ultimate and basically takes the form of the original moon that crashed into Earth to become the new moon. Not that it was an original moon, but you know what I mean. From here, there's a lot of death across the map. There's some downtime. There's no objectives. Perfect time to farm. Remember that balance with your fighting. Because you do it so quickly. Raptors, Wolves, Grump. Look to the map. River is my territory. What can we do with this? Also worth noting, in these perfection videos, we need 25 stack mesh eyes or I'm clickbaiting. And again, that jungle tracking, the intuition, the tempo advantages. She understands that the Viego is going to want to snowball the bottom lane. That's the only lane he has to actually do something. He's going to want to use that Herald to get the final plate. Volibear is taken topside. There are deep wards. He has to be on the bottom side of the map. So she wards a tri-bush, waits, and destroys. Exactly what you want to do. Track, set the trap kill the jungler, and all of a sudden the enemy bottom lane are freaking out. She has business to do and rids the earth of the bottom laners. And now again, don't fall back to your jungle camps. Don't go back to base. There's no farm up. We take over his jungle now. This belongs to us. And just like the whole game, if you know he was bottom side and now there's nothing left whatsoever for him to do, where's he gonna go? Other side of the map. We can track this. We can play around this. Kill the victor for existing in the wrong place at the wrong time and also being victor. Push that wave out. Now you know Viego's on the top side. You have no tower on the top side either. Invade further. Deny the herald usage. Take his stuff. Kill him perhaps. Top lane can TP in and all of a sudden you've elevated the game state before 14 minutes and your team are simply following you around. You are the shepherd. They are the sheep. You are the gorilla. They are the monkeys. Take control of the game and look at that KDA. This is exactly how you play jungling with solid fundamentals. It's unassuming, but when you do it right all at the same time, look at what happens. And here, yes, you want to make sure you take all of his jungle camps, perhaps take the top lane tower. You do not want to take an inhib now. It's way too soon. You're just giving a late game scaling comp free gold. And you don't want to overstay by giving too many shutdowns or perhaps removing yourself from the map, giving them the opportunity to do a drag in. Or if this happens later on in the game, you even could lose a Baron here. And that's absolutely tragic. However, as you can see, I won't begrudge you having some fun. You do have a lot of kills and a fully stack mesh eye, So you got to enjoy the game to some degree. Now, obviously, out of base here, we've got the Mejais, we've got the Death Cap. Take your blue side camps, we want the Dragon. But if you see a fight rolling out, please do. Rotate, use your lead. You are the one with all the gold. You are the one with all the kills. If you don't rotate to the fights, your team might throw. So, kill everyone, push towers. Remember, every move you make, and put this in your mind in the mid and the late game, must be to get closer to the Nexus. If enemies are dead and you have numbers advantages, get closer to the Nexus. Don't go back for your blue and your red. Just like the top side play, you can stay, make it trap, catch someone out. Then you can go back to base. And now obviously standard stuff. Make sure you get the second Herald. Make sure you get all the outer turrets, war with the enemy jungle. Make those picks when they make mistakes. You are allowed one int death throw. Yes, singular. I don't want you to die more than one time in this phase. I want you to totally carry the game. And hopefully if you do all of these things, as you can see on your screen now, you are fed enough just to kill and do whatever the hell you want push into the Nexus and win early. You don't really need macro, you can just have fun, and that's kind of what happens when your jungling is just good. And that's why Smurfs love to play jungle, by the way, because you can do this so easily, and if you do find yourselves in those situations where you need to know how to close out with a bit more proper macro, I will leave links to those below as well from the gameplay channel. I hope you're able to enjoy and learn something, and of course revitalize those jungle juices. Make sure you are always looking for jungle perfection, those 25 stacks, force the enemy jungler to become a top laner. Thank you very much for watching, please do like, share and comment if you did enjoy and learn something as I just said. Make sure your beards are combed fresh. There's a link to Mobilytics' match history in the description below if you want to check out the details of everything that was done. Thank you very much for watching and as always I will see you all in the next tutorial.